Hi there, Linda Goodall here with another little hatch scratching. I mentioned in the previous video that applique is one of my favorite techniques. I really like the extra possibilities of texture, color, dimension, and you just can't always get that with a thread-only design. So this is a little critter that I digitized from purchased artwork. If we take a look at the artwork, I'll just hide the unselected, you can see that I pretty much faithfully reproduced this artwork except for this blue background. You have to remember, embroidery is not artwork converted into stitches. Embroidery is an interpretation of the artwork. And you're free to interpret your artwork any way you want, especially if you're just doing, you know, just artwork that you're doing for yourself. I could have done this as freestanding lace if I wanted, but I chose to do it as applique. Also, I don't typically use outlines, but this one is pretty cartoony and has this heavy outline and I decided that he really needed to have that look. And it's a 4x4 design. I did use two appliques here. I just think that applique adds a little bit more interest than a big flat fill. And that's what this probably would have been if I hadn't used applique. I learned a few little cool tips working on this one and I'd like to show you those now. The other video I showed you how to do just a basic auto applique and hatch. And that's all these are. These are auto appliques. But there's some things going on here that we need to fix before it's sewable. And to see what those are, let's just go to the player and watch him stitch. You can see that I'm doing the wing there and the ear, and I'm doing a little run stitch under there. It gets covered up, so I'm avoiding a jump and a trim. There goes the first applique. Notice that it goes all the way around the fabric. Then we're going to do some other pieces here. Another applique. It goes all the way around. Then we'll kind of finish up the design. See all that layering going on? We've got some bulk here. We've got some bulk here. We've got definite bulk going on there. And what I've done here is I've had this applique butt up right against that one. I didn't stack these appliques. You could have, but this is white. This is a dark color. This fabric could bleed through the white. The other thing is that if I'm using a fusible web, which I tend to use, I could have fabric and web, fabric and web, and that glue can get stiff depending on the type of product you're using. So I like to just have them butted up against each other. And let's see how to get rid of some of this bulk now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a save as. I'm going to keep this as my working file. The next couple steps that we're going to do can be destructive and I might need to come back to the original one and change some things. So I like to work on a copy. And I've already got that copied over here. I've eliminated the artwork. We don't need to see that anymore. And I'm going to turn off True View and I'm also going to get rid of the colors on my applique. I like to see what I'm working on. The applique colors are nice because it can give you a better feel for what your design looks like finished, but when I'm working on it, a lot of times I just like to have no colors. So we can see that we've got stitching there, we've got stitching going on under there, and stitching going on there. Now normally in Hatch, if this were a filled object on top of another filled object, this maybe let's say his body was filled, I could just do a remove overlaps. That doesn't work on an applique. What we need to do here is do a partial applique. And what I learned about using partial applique is you have to choose all of your pieces at once. You can't just like do it step by step. So I'm going to choose his ear and I'm just holding down the control key and I'm going to choose all the pieces and then I'm going to do partial applique. And you can see that I got rid of that. Now I do have this little bit extending here and what I found was on this particular design if I chose this little center piece on the wing along with that piece it didn't cut that out. Now, I have no idea why Maybe it's because of the way these two pieces interact. I didn't select the satin stitches. They're so thin, you don't need to select those. Let me show you a workaround 
if you wanted to get rid of more stuff in there and it didn't work. So this is a cool little trick. So let's undo. Have all my pieces back now. And I'm just going to go to digitize and I'm just going to digitize a temporary shape. I'm just going to make a closed shape and I'm just going to just make it right there. And there's a filled blob. And what I'll do this time is I'll go back and I'll control click all my pieces, the appliques too, go to the applique tab and choose partial overlap and let's get rid of that piece and now there's a gap in there. So if I just look at my applique piece, let's find him, he's right there, and we'll hide everything else you can see that I now have chunks removed. It's still an auto applique. I can't go in there and edit anything. So if I select it, I can't click on the uh, reshape tool and do anything because it's one chunk. And we still need to do a few little things because if I were to sew this piece, let's just do that. See how it's jumping around and not doing it very sequentially? It's because we've just kind of taken bites out of here. And we haven't surgically reconnected the pieces. So we need to do that next. So to do that, we need to make these into editable pieces. And to do that, we have to break apart. So I have it selected there. I'm going to choose break apart over here. And notice that now we have all our various pieces. We have our placement line, and then we have our jump out to where it's going to move the hoop forward, and then it's going to come in and do our tack down, move out again. That's what those little funky stitches are there. And here is our applique. We still can't edit it. We're going to have to break it apart one more time. But let's hide these pieces first so that we're only working on what we want to work on. And I'll select that one and do break apart. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to move this one to the beginning and we'll have that one and then we'll have that one. And now they're better, at least I have shorter jumps in between there, but there's still jumps. It's going to be a jump and a trim. I don't want that. So I can sneak around under that ear and under that wing and get rid of those. And to do that, all I have to do is to digitize a few extra bits here. So we'll go to the Digitize tab and make sure that I have a run stitch selected. I've got the right color. And I'm going to choose Digitize Open Shape. And we'll just make a line from there to there and a line from there to there. Of course they aren't in the right place so I'm just going to select those. I'm going to move them to the top where it's closer to see what I'm doing. Move them down and we're just going to get them moved into position here. And then I'm going to select those press the J, and now it's all one piece. So let's turn everything back on, unhide all. There's my little guy. He's nice and cleaned up. Now I would probably want to do another player, stitch player, make sure everything's the way I want it before I sew it out. And then once I'm happy with the on-screen sew out, I'll send it to my machine and test sew it and see how he looks. So I think you can see that using the auto applique is really powerful, but you can make it even more powerful by just a few more steps. You'll have a much better design, you won't have any extra bulk, any thickness, and your design will look just great. So thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed this and come back again.